So, yeah. this is our, our podcast. So. We've done one other one so far in this rendition. Uh, we, spoiler alert, we tried to do it before on our own in a different setting. Uh, it failed dramatically, uh, crashed and burned. So, now we're doing it again through the Holler Underground. And I'm Aaron. I'm David. And we're not alone this time, so it's a little bit less awkward yeah. than just two, two guys talking to each other. So we have... I'm Zach. And I'm Travis. All right. We, we know these people. They're weird. Uh, no, I don't think either of them have like a very clear idea of what we're going to be talking about today. No. Yeah. I can't get my thoughts together. <laughs> Zach even if was I knew just talking about this maybe five minutes ago. Zach is, Zach so. is worried and nervous. Uh, <sighs> but that should make things better even. So the, the rough idea for what we're going to talk about today is how we got into playing video games. Not just video games, just gaming in general. But... Uh, because we, we realized that David and I, we're not the, uh, we don't have a lot of variety. Yeah, we don't have the widest selection of video <laughs> gaming. We, uh, we do our, our, our own little thing and then try to, we mostly ignore everything else. Yeah. So we wanted to, to incorporate some other people, get some, some new ideas, fresh ideas. You chose the wrong people for this thing. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> if I'm supposed to remember what I did years ago, I can barely remember what I did two days ago. And that's, that's fair. But I'm sure you, yeah. you have to remember the game that got you into gaming. I, I remember oh, perfectly. I think there's only one answer for everyone here, and it's Mario. No, not really, no. Fuck you. <laughs> no. I didn't have How a Nintendo. How is it not Mario? Because I didn't have a Nintendo platform <laughs> when I was a kid, I, never, I didn't play Mario. So, not a whole lot. So what was your first game? My first game, I remember... The first game I ever played for fun, uh, I remember was a... Some fighting game. I don't have a clear memory of what it was. Was it Shaq Fu? I got, <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> but I remember um, my parents, uh, they got some babysitters for us, which weren't actually babysitters. They were just family friends that uh, sat in and let our parents have, have nights out. And one of them brought their PlayStation 1 and some, just a variety of games. And I remember cheesing it. I, me- I found one move that worked against whatever my sister was doing, and I won a lot, and it really pissed her off. Isn't that how you play fighting games, it though? It really is. I mean, the reason I'm I, laughing is because we, we still do, do that now yeah. against each other. I do that I mean, to him all the time. Yeah, he does. It's not like we're good at them. <laughs> but I remember that first off, and then from there, I think we got a PlayStation 2, and I remember... It, any of, have any of you played the Harry Potter video games? Yes. yes. Yeah. Sadly, no. <clears throat> have, have you played the first one? Sorcerer for the PS1, Stone. Sorcerer Stone? I don't think no. I played the PS1 variant. I definitely okay. played so the I PS2 know You're variant. over there smiling. Morgan's in the background. Because <clears throat> we only have four mics. Sorry. But uh, that was a hard fuck game. Platforming was garbage. Yeah. The platforming was horrible. The, the whole uh, broomstick flying sequence was... It was <laughs> Superman 64 again. And I remember... We, none of us could beat. There was, there was one portion that um, you had to fly through all these hoops in a certain amount of time. I remember this now. I had this. Yeah, it was fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, and none of us, n- no one in my entire family could do it because we sat down. We all love Harry Potter. We sat down as a family thing and tried to beat this. Uh, I think we had some other family friends there as well. Like It was a big, big thing. And we couldn't beat that portion. My mom, personally, spent six hours playing straight <laughs> To beat it, and she did. She was the only one of us that could have ever beaten that. And to my knowledge, she has not picked up a video game since, and I think that was the reason. <laughs> uh, so that's, I mean, that was my actual beginning of gaming. I remember the first game that I loved was X-Men Legends for the PlayStation 2. I still love it. I, I still play it every once in a while, all the way through. And it's great. So that was my story. <laughs> Nothing to do with Mario. <laughs> I, I'll take it back to Mario. <clears throat> I remember playing Mario 64 and just loving it. And like when you first get into the castle and you go into the room, first room, <clears throat> like no, nobody in my family or anyone there knew what to do. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, there's this big room, there's this painting. What do I do with this painting? <laughs> Just had a stroke of dumb luck. I jump into the painting, and as I 
kid, I don't know my age, I lost my mind. Because that <laughs> seems so amazing. That you can jump into a painting and that's how you play this game. Oh yeah, that, that was definitely one of those things like, you know, I'm, I'm the oldest one out of everyone that's sitting here right now. And, uh, I mean, yeah, you're a little bit old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but your looks. I mean, I look 35. <laughs> I'm only 22, almost 23. But, um, you know, I mean, because you saying that, you know, the first game that I remember playing, I I'm told it was Super Mario World, but mm -hmm. I remember Yoshi's Island, the, the one that came directly after. But I remember playing Super Mario 64 and just being like, Okay, hang on. <laughs> Why can I move in eight directions? <laughs> that was like the first thing that I remember was like, what is this joystick? What am I doing? God help me. Joysticks were, a, that was a thing. I remember uh, playing some games where it was just the D-pad. And then when I had to learn how to use not, not one joystick, but two, I honestly, I had a hard time. That thing is fucking awful. You go back to play it now, it's terrible. The joystick on it, it, you move straight, it moves you uh, diagonal, no matter what. They could just be our controllers, though. <laughs> no, that we have a new controller that does that. That's true. Wow. So, it's awful. The uh, the first game I ever played was Mario for the just the NES. Because mm -hmm. uh, my mom, my mom and uh, dad used to play games a lot. Old old top games. That's one yeah, of the games Batman. they had. Shit like that. I can't remember that, but uh, that's uh, that's one of the games I remember playing as a kid. But one of the games I loved as a kid was a PS One Scooby Doo Cyber Chase game. I oh remember my that god! Game. Yeah, I played. Yes. I remember that game. <laughs> that game was fun. That's weird. But uh, it uh, I couldn't play it as a kid. I was pretty stupid playing games as a kid. I think if, we all were. I, I was <laughs> as you say that. I remember like. There were games that I, I didn't play for years because I was like, this fucking sucks. I'm bad. This, this game is awful. And then I go back years later. I'm like, this is basic video gaming. How did I not understand it? What's yep. the story you always remind me of? of uh, I think it's Final Fantasy. Kingdom, Some Disney. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, yeah. And I, uh, what's the guy's name? Clayton. Wait, wh which Clayton. one? Motherfucking Clayton. I can't remember if it's the first or second one. Well, I think oh, it was wait, the first one. Clayton. That was the Tarzan world, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the first one. Yeah. Uh, Never played Kingdom so, Hearts. I mean, you get to a certain point, and you get in the Tarzan world, and it's actually a really fun game. I love Kingdom Hearts. But Clayton, the bad guy from Tarzan, it's not just a normal bad guy from Tarzan anymore. He's a boss. And he's on this like this chameleon that yes, doesn't just turn yes. invisible. It turns him invisible. And he's flying, he's like running around, smacking the shit out of you. And of course, if you've ever played Kingdom Hearts, you know that Donald is fucking useless. He is. He ha he's, th he's the healer of the group. <laughs> he only heals himself and Goofy, who no one needs. Which you are funny. the hero. Heal me. Heal me. It's funny because that's how it was in Kingdom Hearts 1. In Kingdom Hearts 2, he, okay, yeah, he like, did get better. Well, no. Like, no? what would happen with me was I would use a potion on myself and he would immediately cast Kiraga on me. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, Donald. You just wasted all your magic healing me that didn't need it. I just remember, because you, you don't have to bring Donald. And I never did. I always swapped them out for whatever. It's like, if I'm in the Mulan world, guess what? Mulan's coming with me. If I'm in the Hercules world, Hercules is coming with me. Because fuck Donald Duck. Why wouldn't you bring Mulan? Like, she, <laughs> like know, at least in Kingdom Hearts 2, she was one of the best characters ever. Badass. Loved her. Was also voiced by... Uh, I don't think... Ming-Na Wen? Yeah. No. I don't think... Yeah. I don't think so. They couldn't get any of the license for, like, the original, like, voice actors. If Even the music, gotten, for that matter. If they could have gotten Ming-Na Wen and... Uh, Eddie Murphy. Well, yeah, it, uh, yeah, they didn't get Eddie Murphy, but it, uh, also uh, if they'd got uh, B D Wong, that would have been great. Cause Sh uh, Shao was also. Uh, Which and, isn't uh, it hard for people who play in movies to try to get the character they voiced in the movie in games? I wouldn't think so. I think like it it's would a be offered to you thing. first. I think sometimes it's just uh, like a timing thing. Like I know uh, Tom Hanks, you know, voice of Woody. Mm -hmm. Voice of Woody in the movies has never done a video game voice for Woody ever. It's, uh, it's, his, it's brother. his brother, yeah. who sounds similar enough, and it's just because Tom Hanks didn't have the time. Tom Hanks was like, "I'm going to try to do other movies now. I've got got other shit to do." Mm -hmm. So if they get people that sound similar, then they just go for that. 
Which Luckily is also enough, he just had a brother who sounded <laughs> exactly like him. Which is also not uncommon for voice actors to change mid, you know, whatever. Oh yeah, they'll change in a series. They'll change yeah. sometimes halfway through a show or a movie or. Because that that was the thing that got me was um, when I found out about this later. Um, I was watching the Persona Four anime that mm -hmm. came out because you know I'm a weeb and everything. Uh, this is partially why we got you to just add to the like we said our variety. Very uh, <coughs> limited. Yeah, it's very uh, low, <laughs> low variety. But um, I was watching it, and I remember looking something up, and uh, Troy Baker is actually the voice of one of the characters. Mm -hmm. And I found out that uh, episode 13, it switched. And it was, and at the time, I had no idea who this guy was, but it was Matthew Mercer that took mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just like, oh, man, this is going to suck. Like, he's not going to sound anything. I'm going to end up hating this character. Sounds... I mean, he sounds just alike, but I like what Matt Mercer brings. I mean, he doesn't sound any different from Troy Baker, but I don't know. I like Matt. <laughs> I like Matt Mercer's better. Does that character ever say what time it is? Uh, no, <laughs> but he does say "get Ben" a lot. Okay, well, that's <laughs> okay. But uh, I let, say that. Let, let, let's bring this back. We got off track. Yeah, we. Well, that's also kind of what we do. <laughs> we yeah, we have a, a purpose, and then we we meander about <laughs> vaguely on the line of that purpose. And Morgan, it's like my dad. <laughs> But um, that's so, a joke. I'm sure it's funny. <laughs> oh, it is. He but, will talk to you for about four hours about different things. It just goes on and on and on. <laughs> but uh, you were talking about like 64, Super Mario 64. Like, w would you consider that your favorite game, or is there something else that took that role, or was that just kind of the game that got you into it? Superman 64, your favorite game? Oh, no, I've sure. never played Superman 64. I did I have, for a short time when they had it next door. I yeah. never played it. I, I I took a I took a spin, <laughs> and holy shit! Just one of those games, it, like, it just looked too too awful. It actually like, hurt. Mm -hmm. It felt bad. <laughs> you could feel yourself dying a little bit. Every I mean, time from you what I heard, it wasn't. It was like roughly on par with that Aquaman game that I've never played. But it's uh, the same no. thing. I never played it either, but I know of it. Yeah. It's not good. But I I wouldn't say it's my favorite game, mm -hmm. but it's definitely like what got me into gaming. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard to pick a favorite game. It is. Yeah. Unless you're me. <laughs> I'm, trying to, think, like I'm got, trying to think right now, and I can't. I have a lot of games that I really enjoy, a lot of games that I love. Now, I mentioned X-Men Legends, and I still play through it all the time. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Like, I love those types of RPG superhero things. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the Arkham Batman series was beautiful. Amazing. You've got... You've mm -hmm. got Dragon Age. You've got Skyrim. You've got, like, all these different things that I can't pick a favorite game. There, the, there are iconic games for me, but there's no top game. Like I was saying earlier, you know, like it was Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, like mm -hmm. that was the stuff that I remember earliest on playing and then just swapping between stuff. But I would say that I do have a favorite game, and it's a game that stuck with me. And uh, it's from a JRPG series from the Tales of series, and it's Tales of Symphonia. And uh, it was GameCube, and... Uh, that game held a special place and it still holds that place because it was the first game that I ever beat without any outside help. Mm -hmm. So no walkthroughs, no... Cause, uh, you didn't my, pick up the 30-page player guide? Couldn't find one. Mm -hmm. But uh, my cousin was the one that usually helped me through a lot of games just because I was a trash gamer when I was you know, really, really young. Who isn't? <laughs> but uh, this was the first one where I, like, I figured everything out by myself and just, ex you know... The thing I liked about the game was the characters, because they're so, they jump out at you. And plus, the main character is voiced by the guy that voiced Robin in Teen Titans, so, mm, okay. you know, can't, can't go wrong there. Okay. So, has anyone's genres of games that they played when they were younger switch out to what they play now? Absolutely. I don't think mine's no. switched out. They've just, like, added on. Oh, mine has. <clears throat> when I first got into gaming, it was, like, platformers, Mario, then Pokemon. Same. Then I got Pokemon? an Xbox 360. Pokemon. We could do a whole episode on Pokemon. Oh, yeah. So. We could. And then I got an Xbox 360. All I played from then on was uh, FPSs. Then I fell out of that. So you, like you were one of those 12 year olds yelling, fuck your mom on Xbox. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Actually, I never used the mic at all. <laughs> it's probably you a good thing. You were one of those, those small children telling everyone your, your fornication patterns with their mothers. Yes. Yeah. Working <laughs> <laughs> thumbs up over there. But uh, I, I just. Sometime during my sophomore year, took a break from gaming. Didn't play games for about nine months. Don't know why. That's long enough to have a baby. I know. That's Maybe that's what happened. happened. <laughs> Maybe. Who but uh, I just picked games back up again. I fell out of first-person shooters, and now I just play basically RPG games, uh, 
beat them up games. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, I've been playing. What have I been playing? Steep. I, I played Steep. Steep, dude. Steep over the weekend. It's yeah. it's just funny to uh, eat shit on Steep. <laughs> yeah, it's just so funny. It's gratifying to watch. Yeah. Steep, for those who don't know, is like a snowboarding game. Well, it's, it's not it. just snowboarding. It's it, skiing. Yeah, skiing. Uh, uh, paragliding. Wing suit thing and paraglider. paraglider. Like the the suit. I, that that sucks. Huh. The paraglider sucks. I don't know. That's like, Ubisoft, the most experience right? I have with yeah. that is Fallout or uh, Far Cry Four. <laughs> yeah, See, which is still so when you mention ski, 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 What do you do? What do you do? I was like in my head trying to think of what I'm about to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, steep. <laughs> it makes me think of the old Jackass game for the PlayStation Two. I never, never played, played it. it. I, I always wanted to though. Really? It looked interesting, oh. but I don't think my mom would let me play because I had Jackass in the name. That's kind of how that's kind of how I was. Like I I have uh, really protective parents. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I lived a sheltered life growing up. Not a bad thing. Um, I wasn't allowed to play M-rated games until I was like twenty. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember buying the Hitman trilogy box set, and my no, parents. Nothing like, says I didn't sneak them under them, oh yeah. but you know. <laughs> my parents were cool with it; they knew what I was buying. But I was trying to buy it by myself because they were off. We were just mm -hmm. at the store, and they off doing their own thing. And I remember like getting up, like I had the money, I was ready for this shit, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you uh, you can't buy this on by yourself." Like what the fuck? Oh yeah. How old were you at this time? I don't remember, but I mean, obviously, I, w I guess I wasn't seventeen at the time, but. But I'm I was just like, trying to think of Jess. Your sister. No, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't with me. They were just. We were spread across the store. Yeah, okay. And I was like, "Well, what the? F I have money. I have money. I can. I've played these games before. Like, this is not new. Like, I, I used. Did you say that to him, or did, was you no, just like fine? I most. I was just like, fuck it, whatever, fine. I'll go find my parents. That, I did you uh, get it? I did get it, <laughs> and I really enjoy those games. But I remember I couldn't. I couldn't play them. I used to work. At GameStop, mm. and uh, there is nothing more gratifying than telling a five-year-old they can't buy a copy of Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> it is the most gratifying feeling in the five world to watch. Old? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, Jeez. like, f like five to. This is what's funny. But what if they want to buy hookers, kill the hookers <laughs> to get your money back, buy more hookers? Here's and something. Here's then something. their parents get mad when you tell them no. Yeah. Unless you explain it. No, they still they oh, well, still get mad. I mean, I mean if, the if the parents want to buy it, if, if the parents exactly. cool they know. Okay, here's the story. When their kid becomes a fuck up, then that's here's here's the best story that I have for that. This kid comes in to buy it, and it's always GTA, and uh, I tell him no. I mean, I I could get yeah. in a lot of trouble yeah, if I sold it to him. So he runs out and gets his dad. And the kid runs back in, and the dad walks in, and the dad starts screaming at me. He was just like, what do you need me in here for? And I was like, sir, your son was trying to buy an M-Red again. Well, I sent him in here, so I wouldn't have to come in here. Let him buy whatever. I was just like, okay, you don't get mad at me. You are a wonderful parent, sir. You are a wonderful parent. Well, I like sent him in here, so I didn't have to be his parent. <laughs> exactly. But the one, one thing I was going to mention was, you know, People think that the demographic follows that ESRB rating. No, no. it it doesn't. It's actually reversed. I find more kids that are you know like half my age and even lower than that are buying M-rated you know like really really violent stuff. But more people my age are gravitating more towards like the E and the E10 and stuff like that. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the <laughs> pictures I've seen that I agree with. It's a. Uh, it's like Call of Duty's made for grown men and Pokemon's made for uh, yeah, young I, I children. For but, it's flipped. but it's flipped. The grown men are playing Pokemon while the children are playing Call of Duty. That's yeah. accurate. Yeah. That's what we grew up we on. Did, yeah, that's part oh, yeah. of it. We grew up on it, and that's what that's what they're growing up on. That's what these mm -hmm. these kids are. That's what's popular, or at least it was. Uh, Call of Duty's still popular, but it was less. It's less popular now. I'd say. Going back, I have a feeling some first person person shooters are dying out. They unless are. unless they I do think something, because they made four fucking billion games. They were popping out if, a game a year, and you're like, "Call the exactly. dude, calm your shit." When, when FPS started it used becoming, to be great. I loved like Call of Duty Three, and when I was actually fighting Germans, <laughs> I thought it was great. I mean, hell, when they moved into like the Cold War, and I was like, "Sure, I'll fuck over some Russians. I don't give a shit." Once you're like when they're flying through space, yeah. Once there's three billion, games, like I don't even have a problem with that. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. That it's a space setting, but the fact that there are three billion of them, and they want you to play them all, I'm like, no. Well, see, that's the funny thing it's is quick. we went through this giant influx because 
if you kind of go back and look, if you look back at a lot of old games, it's a platformer influx. Like, mm -hmm. tons of these games are platformers. Once we started kind of moving into the modern generation, it became FPS. Pew, pew, pew. And now I kind of feel like we're going through another influx again. I just don't know exactly which genre we're going RPG. through the influx of. I want some see, more Western RPGs. It, like, I would I mean, love to see more I'm of those. I've never really played a whole lot of JRPGs. I enjoy the Western RPGs like Skyrim and Dragon Age, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Witcher. I've never played Witcher, but I've heard great things. You should also try Dragon's Dogma. I actually have. I have. I enjoy that as well. It's very fun. Uh, but even, even like I said, like the games closer to like the, what I started with was Marvel Ultimate Alliance and and um, X Men Legends. And these games were, are games that I was really bad at when I was a kid because I didn't understand that I need to manage my equipment. I need to manage my skills. I have skill points. And I yep. didn't understand a fucking thing. So I was just playing. Actually, I remember I stopped playing X Men Legends for like five years. Because I just couldn't get past this one certain point. I picked it up five years afterward. And I realized I just hadn't upgraded my characters properly. I was just completely under-leveled for the area. I tried it again. And I, I just swam through the whole fucking thing, no problem. And I was really mad at my younger self. <laughs> but in the same idea, like, I really like these RPGs. After that point, once I realized what to do, yep. managing your equipment and managing your skills and powers and shit... I love these games. You guys want to hear a funny story? I'm still not good at Dark Souls, but I everything else. <laughs> I'll play the, through Dark Souls for you. Oh, I'll get you. Uh, funny story, just talking about like you know being like that trash gamer or whatever. Um, I played a lot of Tales of Symphonia. Like I said, it was my favorite game. But for whatever reason, my dumb self as a kid, um, the really cool thing is even though it's a JRPG, you can actually have everyone in your party play a character while you're fighting, hmm. which is super cool. My dumb self turned everyone to manual because I was like, what does this mean? And yeah. I turned it there, and all of a sudden, I'm in battle. Nobody's moving. I'm like, what the heck? Like, you guys were just helping me like a minute ago. Why aren't you helping me? And I just AI died and died and thing. died. You gotta, it's, it's not something they ever really tell you about. It's, it's like, not. I think, I think they brushed through it in like 10 seconds, and I was just like, okay, skip this. I want to get, I, you know, I want to go fight monsters. Because, yeah, it's, and I, like, the more that I talk about it, I'm probably, probably going to go home and play more. X Men Legends. But <laughs> just because, like I, I made I, I it a personal mission Souls. to play through the whole. Technically, there is a work. series of them. There's X Men Legends, X Men Legends Two, and then they perfected that into Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which was wonderful, and then Marvel Ultimate Alliance Two, which was, uh, uh, you know, it was not there. great. Um, <laughs> but I, I play through all four once a year, just because. Like I go through the line, and it doesn't take me long. They're not super difficult games, especially once you've been playing them for like 10 years. They're not difficult. But I still, especially now, the more that we play, or more that we're talking about, I'm going to go play one. Is there a new one coming out? What? A new Marvel <laughs> Ultimate Alliance 3? <laughs> what? <laughs> really? I think so. I think so. thinking oh, of Marvel vs. Capcom okay, Ultimate. I know, yeah, yeah. No, I know there's that. Okay. Oh, oh you got my hopes up, man. <laughs> like I said, I want more. I love superheroes with deep and terrible passion. We're going to talk more about that in later episodes. Yeah. Like, there's no... What? Okay. We can do that. Uh, but, yeah, I love superheroes, and I found that I enjoy these types of RPG elements where I can make a team of my own. Especially, that was one of my favorite things about, like, the X-Men one. I was like, I don't like all of these X-Men. Most of these <laughs> X-Men are subpar, let's be honest. And I got four of them that I loved. I built them up, and they were gods, basically. Same thing with all the other games. Like, I... In Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you get, like, 30-something people to choose from. Like, they are not great. These four, this is who I have. And it felt gratifying to make my own team and build them up and make them better. It was not a conventional team. I don't remember who exactly it was, but I remember none of them were on the same team in the comics. None of them didn't look like there was synergy, but there was. But that's the beauty in those types of games. Is I it's more. It's kind of like that, um... Oh, What's the word? Fuck you. I mean, they're they're obviously listening. You mean? I don't think they are. you can tell. I can't think of the word. I think Ravensoft. If you wanna, if you wanna make another one, because it was Ravensoft and Activision, and I love them. Didn't Ravensoft also, close down? I don't know. I know that they made some of the early like Spider-Man games, and I loved those too. So I just want, like, if anyone's listening from any company that wants to make another one, fucking do it. <laughs> I remember I played like a few minutes of Spider-Man two. Just swinging around, I was mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, that's enough." <laughs> that's how it, it was. had great swinging, though. Oh yeah, and it, that they carried that over into. Have any of you played the Ultimate Spider-Man video game? I, don't I have not. There you go. 
it used the, it was the same people that did it for the most part, and they used the exact same swinging mechanic through the buildings. There has to be something to stick to. Yeah, there has to be something to stick to. It was realistic, and you couldn't just shoot your web into the air and swing around, which made... Yeah, the missions in Central Park were kind of a bitch, because like, oh, can that tree's not really hot. I can't do this shit. But it was a great game. I highly recommend it. I don't know really why I got off onto that, but I recommend it. So let's switch up a little bit. What's everyone's feelings about new games? Uh, I think it depends. What, what new games are we talking? Well, there's. I'm okay with some new games. Because I'm poor. I don't get new games when they're still new. Well, I get new games when they're moderately old. Compare games releasing. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, that's what it does. Like, I, got, point. I got the 360 when the Xbox One was announced because the Xbox 360 would be cheap. Yep. I got the Xbox One when the Xbox One S was announced because that would be cheap. I get games that are years old by this point, like five years old. Like The newest game I have is the special edition Skyrim. And that's just, it's not a new game, it's Skyrim. It's so, Skyrim with mods. Yeah, so let's, like, I don't get new games, so we're gonna have to qualify some of these states. Well, let's talk about games releasing in 2017 compared to games releasing like 2006, okay. about how they're being released. Are we talking about- Oh, like, you mean like, like DLC? About how games are- part of a game, yeah. releasing. An a buggy game, game that sucks and there's exactly. yeah. See, 20 different updates. The, you know, I, the game I always go to is No Man's Sky. I hate okay. that game. I bought it. Well, here, yeah. here's I basically kind of bought two copies. <laughs> here's kind of the thing with me. Like, I used to want to do game design, but I've, I've changed that mindset. But I've never lost, like, you know, trying to see it from, like, their perspective. Yeah. But, you know, it's one thing where it's like, you know, back in the day, if they didn't release the full game, and I'm not advocating for, like, DLC and stuff, because it is kind of bullcrap that, you know, here's a game, and then two months later, hey, check out this, you know, half price of the full game DLC yeah. that adds all of the features that we talked about in all of the preview videos. You know, like, here's finally all that, and it's just like, okay, like, I didn't feel like paying $90 for I one game. one of the best more recent, not exactly recent, but more recent versions of DLC was Skyrim. Mm -hmm. Cuz it could give you a pretty full regular game. Like you could still oh, yeah. do a shit ton of stuff. And then the DLC, granted, at least initially they were expensive. They're st they're still like 20 bucks, which bothers 15, me. 15 something bucks. like that. <laughs> like that's, that's a lot for the game that's old, but you could still do everything you wanted to in the vanilla game. And then Dawn Guard added its own special stuff that you could do. Uh, Dragonborn added its own special stuff you could do. It was it was not releasing half a game and then selling you the other half in yep. little portions. It was releasing a full game with extras. That was the funny thing like about like Hearthfire too. You know, in that expansion, yeah, that was because it wasn't adding story elements. It was just it was like, like, would you like to build your own house? And fuck it's yeah, like, I want to build a house. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> I. It was yeah, it was cheaper. It was like five bucks. The best DLC so far. Which are three? It's like, see, it's like having extra games added on. See, that's I like that. Mm -hmm. I haven't played that, but I believe you. I, I'm just gonna have to take oh, it. Where, you could say it's the worst, and I wouldn't know. But that's what I liked about Dark Souls Three was the the newest DLC for that just came out yesterday at mm -hmm. the time of this. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, but um, it was like you know you can play through. I played through the PlayStation Four version of Dark Souls probably a solid three times just because. It was four times. Yeah, it was just it was all there. Like I've it was played a, through it four times. It was all such a cohesive full game. And then it's like, hey, here's the first DLC. Completely new area, you know, not that many boss fights or anything like that, but it but wasn't just, yeah, yeah it, it didn't feel like, oh, hey, you know, we meant to add this in, but we'll just release this DLC later on. It was like, this feels like a full thing. See, and that's, this is one of the, the points that I wanted to talk to you guys about, because I know you played Dark Souls. David, have you ever played Dark Souls? No. Good luck. I have played <laughs> it. Don't pick it up. If once. At a friend's house. And my friend Chris, he was just like, yeah, sure, just, I think it's fun, go for it. Did and he start I, you out on a new game? Yeah. He's a dick. Oh, yeah, he, he's an <laughs> awful person. Uh, I've always told him that. But, um, yeah, I couldn't do it. I think I got as, I stuck in, stuck into it, because I got as far as the Taurus Demon, beat the Taurus Demon, and said, uh, I'm done now. I'm done. We're done with this. I'll never pick it back up. And I've, I haven't, and I'm not going to. But I know that you guys enjoy those games that that basically try to murder you, not as a character, as, as a person. Like, personally, your soul and your brain trying to kill you with them. Yep, I've, I've had that experience with Bloodborne. I can't Bloodborne. understand it. 
It's not fun. Good old Bloodborne. Bloodborne. The the DLC for Bloodborne. Uh, Alt Hunter's DLC is is a pain. Because <coughs> uh, I, I, great I play DLC. games to make myself feel better. Like, well, it, you, I want a challenge. Yeah, but then I get to a certain point. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I won. Or, or a game to beat other people, like Mario Kart, where I well, do my damnedest okay. to ruin David every single time. <laughs> Doesn't always work, but I go for it. But before the anything, the thing about these games, Dark Souls, is I don't feel satisfaction. Well, once you beat something, in my case. If I beat a hard boss, that's killed me like three thousand times. You know, it's, I, I can see that. It, I just, it gives I me satisfaction that. that I beat him, and then I'll go through the new game plus and beat him, try to beat him again. I don't have the mental fortitude to go through it three thousand times to get better to beat it. See, that's where my gratification for those games comes from. Is like, I actually take more gratification from. And this is going to make me sound really nerdy, but I take more gratification from learning the boss's like, attack patterns mm -hmm. and learning how to move around them than I'd, I still get a lot of gratification from killing them. But when I can go into a battle and know, okay, I need to dodge here, I need to do this here, and, and I know... he dodges that way and he gets a shit kicked in. Every time. <laughs> but it's just like knowing exactly when to attack and all that stuff. Like just last night, you know... Um, you hear a lot of people talk about Dark Souls Three that the dancer is one of the hardest bosses. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. in I'm in New Game Plus and I and I every day. But uh, I beat it on my first try, and I was just like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't even that hard of a fight. Tiny being completely dancer. honest, huh? Tiny dancer. Giant dancer. Oh well. As big as this room <laughs> dancer. I Go fight Nameless King. Yeah, I was really hoping we would all come together and just sing Elton John. Yeah, but I, that's what I was no. going for. But we I wasn't paying attention to be. I don't know the Elton John passed. songs. The moment is past. I know one song. Hmm? I know one song by Elton John. What is it? Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Or goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Not follow the Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> I got Wizard of Oz on the mind. Now I'm just imagining that version of Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, okay. Sure. Elton John, you're listening. You still have time. <laughs> you would have enjoyed wearing those uh, fancy shoes. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I like that you brought that up, just like the... Because we talked about how games do it nowadays. Mm -hmm. You go back in the day, you know, it was like I was saying, if they didn't release a full game, they were kind of, you know, screwed. Yeah, people wouldn't buy it, or enough people would buy it, tell everyone this is a shitty half a game, and then no one would buy any more of it. But the other funny thing to think about is, you know, look or at a game... they at least felt bad. Look at a game like Alien Hominid. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of or what played that. What the hell is that? Exactly. That's what I yeah, want to get at. Yeah. Alien Hominid was the first sort of instance of indie games. Because okay. at the time, there was no market for independently developed yeah, games. If you weren't a big name, it didn't really matter. It, yeah, it was like, you know, they went through the process of getting it printed onto disc and getting box and cover art. When that game came out, it was immediately value bin. It was 20 bucks. Okay. But... And that can we game. also bring up the fact that value bin twenty dollars is kind of a shitty thing yeah. to be. But it, but that was the thing games. was like it immediately went into the value bin because it was super super cheap. Yeah. But it was one of those things where it was like, why would anyone go there? You know, it's just like, here's the new game that's out. You know what game I remember being in the value bin a lot? Who remembers that? Uh, it's the E.T. game? No, uh, it's it's some type of racing game, but it has the Burger King guy on the front of it. I, Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never got it, but I saw it everywhere. I saw it Did, in the value bins like a, everywhere. They must have printed like three billion copies that What's no it one called? I, I, it I know and one that you're thinking of from that same line was Sneak it, King. You know. Get it? But there's ah. there's, <laughs> there's Sneak King, but uh, oh man, what was it? While you're looking that up. Race but King? Race King? King? I, no, it might be. Well, I mean, that sounds right. While you're looking that up. But you know, that's the funny thing to think about is just like going back to that because. I was talking about this with my dad the other night, and this is really funny. Kids today, if you walk up and you kind of like look at their library, you know, like if you were in that instance, they probably got 20 to 25 physical copy games, maybe another 15 to 20 like digital games. Like they have so much in their library. Back in my day, I had three SNES games, and that was it. Back in my day. <laughs> you can it's, a, a it's a pocket bike racer. And uh, apparently on November 19th, 20, 2016, Burger King starts selling it for an additional three ninety nine with any value meal. And GameStop sells it for four ninety nine pre owned. That's wow. hilarious. <laughs> wow. But I, I, knew, I had something. I lost it. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up from there. Pick it up. In the last few minutes before we end, because we have class in about twenty minutes soon ish. Yeah, I want to go grab his bite to eat before yeah. we end too. Oh, I am hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I have uh, heaters waiting on me at home. Oh, fuck you. Going, <laughs> going one by one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one Pick by one game that you would recommend to someone listening. Is it, are everything a new game? Old, like literally any, any game you want. Any line? Oh, so shit. One game? <laughs> hey, shut up. You're not in Travis, this. Travis, go first. Can I do multiple genres or is it just no, one game? One Pick game. one game. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it, it's not. It's Tales of Symphonia. I recommend everyone to, because, and I, I'll say this, it's an awful, awful port, but it's the easiest one to get. There was a PlayStation 3 port of the game. It's not a good port because the frame rate's really wonky on it, but if you can find the GameCube version, pick up the GameCube version. But that game, as a kid, I was probably about 12, 13 when I beat that game. You were but a wee lad. And uh, that was the first game that made me feel like emotions for a fictional character on my TV screen. You know, it was like... What kind of emotions? I was going to say, that, it made me feel things. Like, those emotions where Love. you... Well, that, but it's like, those emotions where you beat the final boss, and you feel bad that you beat the final boss. Uh, like, a, like a lovable bad guy kind of thing? Or? Kind of. It's like, when you start to see like why he was doing the things that he did, you feel for that character. And okay, I like that writing, too. That's nice. Yeah, but it was Tales of Symphonia. Just amazing, absolutely amazing game. I've put, just, just to end this off, between the two versions, I've put over 300, 400 hours in oh, collective geez. into that. Yeah, like that's how much I love that game. That's, uh, that's too much. <laughs> Zach, what you got? Arkham City. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. like the choice. Because I can go back any time and play it, not get bored of it. Because... Just fly I find myself beat the shit out of people for yeah. literally three hours. But uh, I find myself in games now, playing like two hours, get bored of them, set them aside. Which yeah. I have a collect. I have 126 games on my hard drive. Yeah, you do. yeah we've seen them. <laughs> and there's times I'm sitting there like, I don't know I what have to, play. to play. Exactly. It's like I have nothing to play. It's like looking at a full fridge and saying, oh, I'm hungry. There's nothing. Well, to it's eat. also for the <laughs> fact that there. half of them aren't even installed on your Xbox. Yeah, they are. Are they? I, it, thought, I it, thought there were some that weren't installed yet. Every game I have is, uh, well, yeah, every game I have is basically digital, besides a few that I have that I'm thinking are sitting of your updates there. then. Well, there's other games I don't have that are in, not installed. Mm -hmm. I have like 60 so something. City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's the best of the Batman. Yeah. I really enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I'd say I put it about. 90 hours into it. I think the Batmobile was just a bit too overused. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I like Night, yep. but City, I think, still wins. Plus, City had the better storyline. Yeah. It's all yeah. around. But before we go off on that tangent, Aaron? If, oh, I had, if I had to recommend one game... Marvel Ultimate Alliance? N it, no, it would be <laughs> X-Men Legends. <laughs> so you're not far off. If you like X-Men, and you like having an X-Men game where... Uh, Professor Xavier is voiced by Sir Patrick Stewart. Is that the one with the bad Deadpool? Really? No. Yeah, it's, it's voiced what by Sir Patrick that? Stewart. That's excellent. So that's gorgeous. awesome, right? Um, I think it is. I I know, and it it's, is. it's heavily based off like the original like X Men and X Men Two, uh, like layout of the mansion. You get to run around. It tells the story of an, not an original character necessarily, but it's a character I had never heard of. A uh, character named uh, I think Magma, something like that. It was, Girl and Alice and Christmere. But it, there's a coherent story that also gives you the freedom of, oh, do you want to be Wolverine? Which you do. You don't want to play as anyone else because that's <laughs> fucking stupid. But like, you can pick your team from all these different X-Men and you'll never use Beast because he's awful. But <laughs> you get to choose, you get to make your own X-Men and you get to feel like a fucking hero when you defeat Avalanche and Magneto and they got a shit ton of sentinels and like it's you feel like a hero. So Okay. Uh I'm gonna It's on PlayStation two, I think, or yeah. I don't know what other PlayStation one place. I don't know whatever the other platform it was on. I had it on PS two, I think it was on some X uh, original. Yeah, Xbox, I think it's on maybe. Xbox. I don't know, but I highly recommend it if anyone hasn't played it. And you just find it somewhere. So Yeah, they're very cheap. Oh, Do yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's less than five dollars for the most part. Yeah. But it's it's a steal. You say that, and it's online for like 350 I mean, you never know. Would Sir you Patrick sell Stewart's. It? No, God, no, I wouldn't sell my copy. I, I had a cop. I had my original copy. I played it so much that the disc just, it scratched itself and fucked up, so I just bought a new one immediately. I, w I went out at like 5 p.m. and drove to page three just to get that and went home and continued playing it. So, 
I have a problem. I'd do that. Yeah. So David, what do you have? I'm going to pick a game that everyone here knows I love. Minecraft? Think, huh? Is it Minecraft? Minecraft is one of the greatest games of all time, but no. But no. Okay. What I think only Aaron has played this, but The Last of Us. Yeah, no, I've, oh played, I, I've played it. I've played it. It's, just, it's not my style of game. I fucking got, love Blast. You got Ellen Page. And Ellen Page. And uh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we, uh, we, uh, we'll probably talk about this more in other episodes, but we, yeah. when we played through, we, did, we didn't look at through everything seriously. Uh, when they, We look at Ellie, and she looks like a character model, looks like Ellen Page, so we just called her Ellen. Uh, and then, was it? Uh, the uh, Marlene, Marlene is the queen of the fire... Fireflies. Yeah. At one point, they used the phrase Queen Bee, and that just made us think of Lord. Yeah. So we just called her Lord. We gave everyone dumbass nicknames, and I think it would be really fun to like play through that again, maybe for the channel at some point mm -hmm. in the in the future. Oh, when Last of Us Two comes out, I will lose my fucking oh, yeah. mind. I want to mention just so this doesn't get like a ton of like flamed comments or whatever. Um, <laughs> you think we're gonna get comments? <laughs> hey, That's adorable. Know. But uh, no only people's gonna watch this. this is us. But uh, yeah. I want to mention. The Last of Us, like, the reason I say I don't like it has nothing to do with the story, because that's what a lot of people like to accuse me of. They're just like, oh, you're saying it's a stupid story? I don't think it's a stupid story. It's the gameplay that kept me from playing that game. I don't know. The only thing I, I remember about the gameplay is... I thought it was really dumb logic is, uh, in that uh, you couldn't use uh, a shiv more than once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was that. Stupid. I also remember more and, than until once. Until later in the game, when you yeah. upgrade your shiv, making well, capabilities. Think, I think you can. Well, that's fucking stupid. Anyway, sorry. Interrupted. But yeah, Last of Us is what I'm going with. Okay. It's good. I mean, it, it's also pretty accessible. A lot of like, I mean, it got remastered on PS4. Yeah. My when I got my PlayStation 4, it came with uh, the Last of Us remastered. It was just like, there here you go. go. Yeah. There you go. That's really all the time we have. I mean, realistically, we have more time, but we're hungry. <clears throat> and we need to leave, so you guys yeah. can fuck off. Uh, <laughs> and we thanks. also have class. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We're going to go watch some Indian movie, probably. We'll, ha we'll have to do this again sometime. That's not PC. No, they're actually from <laughs> India, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, we'll get off on that yeah. next time, maybe. I don't but, know. yeah, hopefully maybe you guys can uh, come back for different episodes. Maybe Morgan can no actually get a microphone at some point. <laughs> instead of just sitting in the background making hand gestures and whispering. But, uh, well, can we also do a shout-out to ourselves? Do a shout-out yeah, to yourself. Shout-out, man. You should, you should go check out our YouTube channel, yeah. uh, Them Morons. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, if they're if they're listening to That's this, what the they expect? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You you can watch. Uh, I recommend our Super Mario sixty four playthrough because mm -hmm. episode two, I immediately got a game over. That's so. perfect. Also, at some point, I don't know when this is going to be put out, but hopefully by that time, you probably have a, a vlog from like Comic Con, right? Yes, uh, I got the last of the footage today. Just got a little bit more to edit, and that will be going up. So if if you look and it's not already out. Wait yeah, we'll a put a bit. link to your channel so down in the... Game okay. Quality. Mediocre game Oh, well, it's less than mediocre. And after I get... Uh, I'm getting a go. Switch, and I'll be getting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Edition with it. Oh, oh then we're going to join you. All of us, we're going to have a... video. A, we're going to have a... Yeah. You've never played... That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> we better end it now before we get into a flame war. Okay, well... Uh, Thank you guys for yeah, doing no this, and especially you, Zach, you, you didn't know you were doing this. Yeah, um, I was busy uh, editing something. You were, doing, you were actually <laughs> doing something Get practical, uh, but we told you this is more important. Sure. Uh, so thank you. Uh, there's no real ending to this. Just kind of let it go.